Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS laptop. This is an ASUS VivoBook S model S510U. And in this video I'm going to go over how you can boost up the performance of your laptop, increase the storage. And because these laptops, when they came out, they start sh got shipped out with a solid mechanical drive. The mechanical drives are really, really slow compared to a solid state drive. By replacing it to a solid state drive, you can boost up the performance humongously. Just remember, once you replace your mechanical drive, you have to reinstall Windows. I highly recommend to freshly reinstall your Windows. It takes literally less time than cloning the Windows, which can give you a, a error, blue screen, and crashes, boot up, boot errors, and stuff like that. So I made a video how to create your Windows 10 or your Windows 11 USB boot drive. Even Windows 11 for the laptops that are not compatible with the requirements of the Windows 11. So if yours is not compatible, you can check that link in the video, how to create your Windows 11 USB boot drive. And once you have the new hard drive in there, in here, pop in the USB drive, boot it up, and it's gonna take you to a Windows installation guide. Follow my Windows installation guide, and you'll be in the Windows with no time. And within a few Windows updates, all the drivers, everything will be installed. Now, if you wanna add an additional storage, you can do that while you're keeping your main storage. I don't know why somebody want to have a mechanical drive in here, but if you want, that's available. So I'm going to demonstrate how to get to those drives. First thing first, back up your files and power down the laptop, flip it upside down. And down here, we're going to grab ourselves a good screwdriver set. I always recommend the iFix screwdriver set. And we're going to use a Phillips number one. And then you need an opening tool. For the opening tool, I'll be using a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. Down here, there's a whole bunch of screws. There's a four types of screws, and they're different. There's a hidden screws under the back rubber covers. Put the opening tool underneath and lift it up and put it to one side. It has a little adhesive. Do the same thing on both sides. Now we're gonna remove these black screws under the rubber feet and keep them in a separate pile. pile. Now we have one single long screw, chrome is in the one in the back mid. Remove this one. This is the only longest screw, chrome. And we have two short screws, one on each corner on the front end. So go ahead and remove these two. Now the rest of the screws from the corner side and one in the mid, these are all the same size and height. So go ahead and remove all of them and keep them in a separate file. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. All right. Now that we remove all the screws, you're gonna put it to this side. You're gonna grab the opening tool, and we are gonna start from the front end of the laptop. We're gonna put the opening tool right in there, and we're gonna twist it. Do all that in the front. About one or two millimeters, stick it in. Don't stick the whole guitar pick in there. You wanna hear those clips are getting loosened up. You're gonna hear those click sound. That's normal. And uh, you want to work yourself on the side towards the back corner as much as you can. Do the other side. So oh, I forgot one screw. Always make sure you put remove all the screws. And I'm gonna start from here. There. Now, once you do the side and the front, you can just grab it from the front end, wiggle around, and it will release the back clips. All right, right away here, we can see the big battery, the fan, and everything right in here. You can see 2.5 inch mechanical drive, has this little gaffer's tape on top. Remove this one. Honestly, the adhesive from this is really bad. It can just slip over the board, can cover up the fan, just crush this. You don't need it. It's not worth having it in there. But if you want, you can just keep it on top. All right. Right away here, we can see 2.5 inch, and there's an M.2 slot in here. This is not a PCI Express. This is an M.2 SATA. So this is the same speed as this one over here. But this one is not, uh, you're not taking advantage of the SATA speed because you have a mechanical drive. You can put up to 8 terabyte mechanic, uh, solid state drive in here. But I'll recommend you at least one or two terabyte uh, solid state in here. And you can have a M.2, which is an M.2 that has a two notch on them. M.2 
solid state drive on the here at the same time up to two terabyte. I think there's a four terabyte. I don't think there's a four terabyte SATA one, but if there is one, you can put it too. We can put two terabyte in here, uh, one terabyte or four terabyte in here, whichever you want. And the transfer rate between them will be super fast. All right. Just remember, let's say if you want to put this one in here, let's pull it out. To do this upgrade, you don't need to disconnect the battery, it's absolutely not necessary. All right. To put the M.2, you want to make sure this notch is right in here. There's a tiny groove in there, tiny notch right inside the connector. You want to slide it in the connector. Doesn't matter the orientation of the chip, in a 45 degree angle right here. And you want to push it in there, and it has to click in. And once you bring it down to the case, the screw hole has to match. This is a tiny screw, it's called an M.2 screws. I'll leave the link in the video description. You can put it right on top of it, just like that. Now, to remove this uh, mechanical drive of 2.5 inch, you have to remove this M.2, lift it up about 10 degree, and slide it back. Don't yank it up, otherwise you're gonna break the dim. To remove this mechanical drive in here, you wanna remove four screws, two long screws in the front end, and two short on the back end that holds the caddy. The caddy is the bracket that holds the hard drive in place. So remove these two screws, and remove two screws at the back, you have the short one, and then you wanna slide it towards this side. That's why you had to remove the other one. And once it's slided, lift it up. Now here we have, they have this caddy, the bracket that holds the hard drive by two screws on this side and two screws on that side. I have a Kingston drive in here. So what you wanna do, you wanna remove this bracket by removing the four screws, two on each side, Now make sure the orientation of the drives, they are the same, the connector. So you don't want to put this one the other way around. So you want to lift it up. Is that Toshiba five, one terabyte? Put this to one side. Grab this one in the same position, put it in there. And put the four screws that are removed on top of this so it holds it in place. Don't tighten it up too much. So because let a little wiggle of room and once it's Four of them are in there, then you can go around and tighten up the screws. This one has a little warranty paper on top, so never mind. Now I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna tighten up the screws. All right, then you wanna bring it down in an offset position, and then you wanna slide it right in there. Put the longer screws in the front and put the short screws at the back end. Now, this client only wants to upgrade one drive, so we're gonna upgrade this one. I recommend you the Samsung uh, Evo SSDs. They are really durable and reliable, and they will last a long time. But if you want a cheaper version, you can go with a Kingston or A Data. All right, if you wanna add an extra one, add it in there. And don't disconnect the battery. If you have disconnected, plug it back in. Grab the bottom cover. Put it right on top. Push the corners, the sides down. You want to hear those click, sound, click sounds in the back corner. If you see any gaps opening, you just want to pinch them together and it will go to its place. Just make sure that there's no gaps opening. And then you want to finish up by putting the black screws right on the back corner under the rubber feet. Grab the longest screw, the chrome screw in the back mid. The two short screws go one on each corner in the front end of the laptop. And you want to put the rest of the screws all over this place, wherever you see a screw hole. And once I finish this one, I'm going to put my USB boot drive and show you guys how to boot it up to the USB so you guys know. Most of you guys probably know how to create your Windows USB boot drive. I'm not gonna make this video long. That's why I made a separate video, how to create it, and another video, how to properly install Windows, which is super easy. You can buy yourself an enclosure for the hard drive, and you can use your old mechanical drive as an external hard drive. 
So that's a doable. So you can buy an external storage like this, carry and put your hard drive in there and you have a USB-C portable storage. Again, these are really good to have on there. Put the rubber feet on top. I have my Windows USB boot drive. I'll plug it in into any of my USB ports. I power on. I'm going to tap F2 or F1. I think for the BIOS is F2. I'm just going to tap between them just like this. And I should get an Asus logo within a few seconds. And there we go. So let's see. It does. There we go. We are inside the BIOS. I can see my Kingston USB. I mean, this is my Kingston USB travel. I can click on it. And it's just a USB port. And in here it says a boot menu is an F8. You can go F8. And you can see which one you want to boot from. You want to choose your USB to boot from. So I can choose my USB data travel. And it's going to restart. And it's going to start booting up from here. And it's going to take you to a Windows USB installation. So I'll give a few seconds. And it's going to start rotating. And it's going to give you to a Windows installation. Follow any of my Windows installation guys, so you don't have those extra bloatware affiliated programs installed in your Windows. So you have a clean Windows installed. It takes literally up to five minutes probably to install your Windows. Your language next and next, and that's it. Again, I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.